Hi guys, we are back tonight answering yes. your questions and right now, Elderberry is everywhere. If you haven't heard, um, a lot of people use Elderberry to fight um, when, when they're fighting whatever, like yeah. when they're not feeling well and with the coronavirus, there has been a lot of people talking about um, maybe we shouldn't use it during uh, you know, this coronavirus uh, outbreak yep. and if you have it. But we want to talk about what the studies say. We want to talk about what research says because we've talked about this week, mm -hmm. you've been very good at talking about fear. There's a lot of fear um, going on right now. So in the midst of fear, there can be a lot of misinformation and a lot of people can jump the gun and just really <laughs> jump um, into things that's not that are not true. That's how we have run out of toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. That's how grocery stores have run out of food, even though there's no outage of food. We just need to give stores an opportunity to restock. Mm -hmm. So in this um, time of fear and a lot of questions, we want to give a lot of clarity. Yesterday we talked about fevers, mm -hmm. um, fever in children. We talked about um, the day before that on Monday, we talked about antiviral foods to be stocking up on and to be consuming, not the junk um, in the freezer section. So today we're going to be talking about elderberry and this whole cytokine storm. Yeah, I mean, again, this is uh, one of those things that you see uh, in this, um, you know, in this time period that that to me just drives me absolutely up the wall and drives me nuts because even in the natural health realm, uh, this is this is a this is a fear based approach. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's and it's real like you know kind of rooted foundation. This is this is driving fear uh, in in an area that there's really no need to. And we're gonna we're gonna kind of dive into that um, tonight. You know this this term cytokine storm. Man, it's like you know it's somebody somebody, <clears throat> somebody throws it out yeah. and it's like all of a sudden we're gonna find everything that we possibly can out there that uh, you know may promote you know cy cytokines and pro-inflammatory responses in the body. Um, and so I kind of I, I want to talk about that uh, a little bit, you know, uh, in in this video because you know bottom line is when we're looking at you know the cytokine storm. For those of you who don't know, uh, you know cytokines are actually they're they're basically small proteins, yeah, small signaling proteins, um, and and they're actually immunomodulators. They they don't cross the cell membrane, but they signal, um, you know, again to, to kind of uh, help the immune system respond uh, to to what's going on inside of it to foreign invaders and so you know they these these cytokines are signaling proteins now what we have to realize is that the the term cytokine storm is being thrown around the coronavirus because that tends to be uh, a primary reason why uh, we're seeing people that, that have some respiratory. really really drastic respiratory issues mm -hmm. um, in immunocompromised people so let's make that very, very clear. Let's start with that, you know, to begin with. In coronavirus, the people that are most susceptible to the freaking coronavirus, and I get a little bit upset about that um, because, again, we throw around these numbers like, you know, deaths and people who are going to get, you know, coronavirus and have all these problems. They are in immunocompromised people. All right, and so the cytokine, cytokine storm, you know, again happens and it creates you know this pro-inflammatory response in the lungs, uh, which then again kind of begins the attack of its own tissue. Um, and and here's what the other thing that I do not like is the term the the words are thrown out uh, all the time that the immune system just accidentally makes a mistake, yeah. right? That I it over responds. <laughs> yeah. Um, I to me this this is why my root and foundation in the, in knowing that the body always re does the right thing at the right time and it responds in the best possible way that it can respond to its internal and external environment right and so that being said in immunocompromised people there's already so many things that have hit their immune system that have created a lot of damage within the body and so, you know, having something like the cytokine storm that can lead to things like sepsis and organ failure, um, again, you gotta remember, there's a lot of moving parts to this. Mm -hmm. And so to throw out terms that elderberry is gonna be a primary cause 
of a cytokine storm to me is absolutely insane in my first thoughts. And then I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to go to the literature and I'm actually going to look it up. Yeah, so. Literature. <laughs> Here we go. Let's go. The Lancet. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can yeah. see that. I yeah. know the, the light. He's got studies here right. laying out on the table. I'm like, what is this? You got you printed out a research paper? Like these are pages yeah. that Dr. Nathan just went over today, and I'm just like, all right, this is gonna be a good video. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, I, yeah. I want to make sure that we're bringing bringing actual science to this this matter too, um, because I don't think that there should be fear where there, it's completely unnecessary. Really, I don't think yeah. there should be fear at all. But we'll get into that in just a little bit. But the primary place when and, and again this is when you know different blogs that are out there that, that again have no business posting things like this um you know they, they really have no scientific background to begin with the primary study that they cite is this guy right here from 2000 this is, this is a study uh it's called the effect of herbal remedies on the production of human inflammatory and anti-inflammatory cytokines uh, we're looking at from the Israeli Medical Association Journal. All right, that's where this study is coming from. Um, I believe it's a study published in 2002. All right, now let's break this down just a little bit. The first flaw in this study is that this was done again using 12 people's serum. So this isn't even done in a human being. This study is actually done uh, in a Petri dish in cells. Um, and so what they showed in these 12 individuals that they, they showed that when introducing something like, uh, again, they use uh, Sambucal, uh, looking at, at black elderberry extract, what they found is that, again, there was an uprise in cytokines and pro-inflammatory markers. So that's what they found. Again, the problem with this study is this study is not done in a human being. This study is actually done in a Petri dish. And again, it's literally done yeah, how uh, many? in the cells. 12, 12 people. Small, this study is done on 12, limited 12, study. 12 yeah. donors. Let's not even call them 12 people. These are 12 donors. So that's the, that's the first problem with this study. The second problem is that, again, when we're putting things in a Petri dish, we're, we're actually, uh, again, we're, we're isolating that and we're getting it away from, from real life interaction and physiology within the body. And so to state that elderberry can create a cytokine storm from the fact that there is a study done on 12 donors outside of the human body that raised cytokine levels in a cell in a Petri dish, again, that can create something like a cytokine storm and lead to sepsis and lead to uh, you know organ failure is absolutely insanity. I can't even believe that they drew that connection to a cytokine storm, all right? I can't believe that. And so now let's actually look and say, okay, well, are there any other studies that show the opposite? And so when we dive into some other studies, like I love this one right here, and actually there's a lot of different links that we can post to some we'll of these studies these. that we looked at. After we're done, I'll put these links in the caption. Yep. That's what we do for every Facebook Live, so you guys can look through it yourself. And just so you know, that's the only study that's out there that shows. Again, I've looked and I've researched, and again, uh, you know, if you found one that you'd like to share, you share absolutely it. can. Yeah. I would love to. I'd love to break that down and show you that it's it's BS anyway as well. Um, but anyway, when I'm looking at this, I, there's another study. This one is actually published. Let's see. Uh, this is this is called uh, again black elderberry extracts inhibit infectious bronchitis virus at an early point during replication. This is actually done on uh, again another another virus that is basically considered a coronavirus, right? And so what they did is they looked at um, the interactions of black elderberry extract and what they found, here's what they concluded. These results demonstrate that black elderberry extract can actually inhibit, right, these uh, you know, infectious bronchitis virus at an early point in the infection, uh, probably by rendering the virus non-infectious. But even they point out, hey, there needs to be more studies that are actually done. Now, the other studies that I've looked at when it comes to elderberry is that elderberry is actually a part of stimulating what's called immunomodulation. So it's immunomodulating. It is not a stimulatory effect. So a lot of people use the term, and I even did this for a while, and actually it was that, that elderberry lady that, that corrected me, and then you 
look in the Wait, research and find out elderberry that lady. elderberry lady. Chattanooga, <clears throat> and even if you're outside of Chattanooga, yeah. that elderberry lady on Facebook. She's awesome. She's yeah. awesome, <clears throat> so knowledgeable. But yeah, she told you, what did so she, she tell you she, when she so came So I was show? using the terms, you know, stimulating the immune system. And she, she, would, she kept correcting me saying, <clears throat> no, modulating the immune system. And I'm, I'm like, what are you talking about? What is that? What do you even, what do you even mean by that? And that's where I really started to take a deep dive into it. What we realized with something like elderberry extract is it's an immunomodulating, it has an immunomodulating effect. Now let me explain what that means. This means that when you have an immune response, this is going to allow your immune system to respond appropriately. It's not going to stim overstimulate your immune system and it's not going to understimulate your immune system. It is going to respond appropriately. What does it do? It actually supports the innate immune response. That's what it does, right? It's an herb that supports the innate immune response of the body. Now, again, when we're looking at, for those of you that are just joining us, <clears throat> when I break down the research, it is an absolute insane jump to go from the fact that in a petri dish we found that uh, you know that donor cells right contain higher amounts of cytokines and pro-inflammatory interaction there that's completely outside of the human body. That's the only study that was done in 2002, and make the all the way the jump to if you and your kids take elderberry extract that you might have a cytokine storm and Everybody you might stay die, away from it. right? Yeah, you might yeah. die from you know organ failure and sepsis. I also like to think about this. When we're talking about sepsis, let's talk about that for just a minute. We've seen sepsis actually rise, you know, exponentially yeah. uh, in our society, right? Exponentially. A lot of complications uh, from it. Oh yep. yeah, for sure. And here's one of the most common things that you have to remember why something like sepsis is rising. It's because of an issue with our terrain. Let's talk about that for just a second. So I will actually have to do a whole video on the difference between the germ theory and the terrain theory and break that down. But here's what we have to remember. When we're looking at your terrain, we have to build up our own terrain. And part of that terrain is your microbiome, right? And so what we know is so many people's microbiome is so far off and it's loaded with things like antibiotic resistant bacteria. It's loaded with things like, you know, activated viruses because the immune system is so bogged down by other things that are going on inside of the body. We're talking about in people that have things like chronic diabetes that have literally run rampant and metabolic issues, you know, people that are dealing with their stage three, stage four cancers that they've already went through conventional medical treatment. You know, we're talking about, again, sepsis happening in immunocompromised people. There are so many different factors that come into play when we're talking about sepsis. So to make the jump from elderberry extract to sepsis and to a cytokine storm, to me, is just absolutely unwarranted. And to me, that's fear driven. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and I want to I wanna talk and touch on this, okay? We're at a day and age where you would be living under a rock if you didn't realize or acknowledge the fact that we are encountering antibiotic resistant bacteria. Um, like there's bacteria now that has mutated so much mm -hmm. that antibiotics are not responding to yeah. it. So, I mean, it's pretty common. I mean, CDC is saying it, journals are saying it, but it took a lot of years, a lot of decades of over-prescribing antibiotics, over-prescribing medication, and addressing bacterial infections the wrong way. It took a lot of years of that. It took a lot of lives, a lot of people dying before people realized, whoa, 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 bacteria has been with us since the beginning of time, it lives within our bodies, it's super smart, it wants to survive, it's gonna mutate and it's gonna do that to survive. Well, so are viruses. Yeah. We have viruses all inside viral of our RNA. body. Viral yeah. RNA, it's inside of our body. Viruses have also been with us since the beginning of time. They're also intelligent, they're also going to mutate and become, that is if they weren't created in a lab, <laughs> if they weren't created by humans, that's a whole <laughs> nother story there. But viruses are gonna naturally adapt and mutate and try to become stronger. Mm -hmm. So we have to take a step back and realize, now we've gone through all these years of information and have realized, oh crap, bacteria is smart. Well, guess what, viruses are smart too. Yeah. And so going back to what you said, we have a gut microbiome like, 
Guys, your like diarrhea, skin microbiome, skin yeah, microbiome. Like you have mouth microbiome. Mouth microbiome. Yeah. We just took our daughter mm-hmm. to get her lip ties looked at, mm-hmm. and she talked about how. She, she was, I mean, these dentists are not normal people. If you guys want to know, we went to Dr. Paige Prather in Nashville, Tennessee, and they were like, yeah, dentists used to believe it was just sugar that was causing these cavities, but it's actually a microbiome imbalance both in the gut and in the mouth. So the gut microbiome, does this mean your constipation, your diarrhea, your skin issues, your Hashimoto's, your joint pain, your brain fog, your memory loss, your fatigue, could all of that be making you more susceptible to having viruses that are gonna wreck your immune system? Absolutely. It's healing your immune system by healing your gut microbiome, by rebalancing your body. Mm -hmm. We're missing it completely. So all these people are like, oh my gosh, don't take elderberry. First of all, you're looking at the, you know, researching correctly, but you have to take a step back and understand no, it's not going to be the elderberry. No, it's not even going to be this virus in itself. Just so you guys know, the people no. that are dying are people that have these health issues. No. They, they're older and they have, you know, they've said, CDC said, um, underlying diabetes and like heart disease and lung um, issues. Lung yeah, issues. Lungs, yeah. So <laughs> guess what we have to do? Not just right now. Listen, once this all dies down. It's still going to be important for every one of you, for your loved one, for your parents, for your grandparents, to heal their gut microbiome, to strengthen their immune system, and help your body adapt. Yes. And yeah. guess what? Elderberry can help with that. That's right. Yeah. But also, can I add this yeah, too? Yeah, for sure. I, I will say this. Okay. I will. I will point out this. Yeah. Can I say this? When we first started dating, mm-hmm. that's what, okay, guys. I've been doing keto. Um, I get, I've gotten my body into ketosis and out of ketosis for over 12 years now, right? And I remember when we first started dating, you were like, dude, what are you doing? You would eat, I would eat a whole tub of almond butter, <laughs> like in two days, and I would eat a dozen plus eggs in a week. And you were like, no, 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 like you're, yes, you're healthy, and that's great and everything, but there is too much. You know, yeah, there's, there's too much is, of it. So, guys, if you're <laughs> chugging elderberry syrup yeah. like every day, yeah. so too much of anything is going to be a problem. Right. You and, know, and, that's going to be different. And remembering that, that there's no such thing as a panacea. There's nothing that, yeah. <clears throat> that again, is going to solve every single problem that's out there. But it is something that can support the immune system. And what I found is that the most powerful way to use elderberry is actually not only preventatively, um, but also right at the beginning. That's where I found is 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 the mo- is the, the the biggest strength of actually utilizing elderberry. Now, let's say that you actually get something like the coronavirus. There's some other really powerful herbs that are out there that have been shown to do some really, really great things. And I actually pulled up a study from The Lancet that, again, is evaluating uh, things like SARS, right, and coronavirus. And actually, one of the most powerful things that you can use is actually licorice root, right? Licorice root extract is one of the most powerful things and showing some amazing, amazing immunomodulation for the lungs itself and really work on the lungs. Um, so again, there's great things that you can use uh, during the infection, but elderberry is one that, that I found is most powerful in prevention and right at the beginning of, uh, again, of infection. But at the same time, let's also, let's just try to remember that um, you, we can read a lot of things on different you know blogs that are out there. And I don't think there's any room right now, right, in our society with the amount of fear that's going on over everything that's happening, I definitely don't think there's any room for spreading more fear yep. than, than there, you know, than, than there already is. One of the things that we've been talking about a lot is this: we have to choose faith over fear, guys. We have to walk in faith over fear in a society that is drowning in fear right now. We have to show a whole different side of things. We have to show them what it looks like to walk in faith. Now, just because you walk in faith does not also mean we're also walking in wisdom. Those two go hand in hand. Now, when you walk in faith, I will say this, sometimes to the outside world, it looks like you're making a crazy decision, right? When you're eating the right foods and eating real foods and you're staying away from the trans fat and the sugar, when you're doing things like making sure that you're getting plenty of air or when you're being super weird and you're walking outside barefoot on the grass, right? And getting sunshine, that may look weird to some other people, but 
again, to me, that's walking in faith. And those are things that literally our body is innately built, uh, you know, again, to work in symbiotic relationship with our planet, uh, as well as the food that we consume, the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, and realizing that every decision that we make should be based on faith and not based on fear. So even in the natural realm, we have no room for that crap going around the internet and scaring people away from giving elderberry to their kids that again are not even an like not even completely symptomatically affected by the freaking coronavirus, there is no stinking reason to drive fear into people at all. All right. And again, I've got the research. Yeah. I've looked at it. I can't, I've seen absolutely zero that shows me that you can go from taking elderberry extract to that specifically driving a cytokine storm and creating, uh, again, something like sepsis. Uh, in an individual, in a child, in a person, in an adult, you know, period. And this is the one thing I want to say. There's a lot of uh, medical doctors that want to talk about. um, And we're going to answer your question, guys. I have them pulled up here on my phone. If you see me looking down, I'm trying to pull it up so we can answer you guys. After I say this thought, I'm going to let Dr. Nathan know what questions you guys have. So if you're listening right now, post your question. We're going to go through from the first person that asked a question. But the one thing is this. There's all this talk about immune boosting, immune boosting. You know, there's a lot of people in the natural health that are saying this is an immune boosting thing. Um, And then there's people that are in medicine that are like, you can't boost your immune system. There's one thing that we do know is that when your body is in survival mode, when your body is under stress, HPA dysregulation, hypothalamus pituitary, adrenal dysregulation is well studied in the literature. Mm -hmm. When your HPA axis is dysregulated, meaning cortisol, survival response, sympathetic response, your body breaks down. Your body is not able to heal. Your body is not able to uh, function optimally. So when we talk about working on your immune system and working on your body, what we're talking about is adding things into your lifestyle that allows your body, your body to heal, yeah. your body to adapt better. This is a really big deal because if you're taking elderberry or vitamin D or the vitamin C to cure coronavirus, you're going about it the wrong way. Absolutely. The way you handle this it's situation. A mindset, yeah, right? yeah. The way you handle this situation right now is that if you cut your arm, that's it, going to scab over and heal. Right now, your heart's beating, your lungs breathing, your body knows what to do. Mm -hmm. When it stops doing that, then you know there's an interference there. And your job is to listen to your body, remove the interference, and allow your body to heal. Allow your body to adapt. So stress, like fear, God, I mean, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Wayne Dyer, you know, even Tony Robbins. I mean, people are seeing Bruce Lipton had looked at studies. And they live out that if you believe you are sick, you will be sick. What you believe, what your emotions are, if you are fear. And listen, guys, I'm preaching this, but it's like I'm looking at myself and I'm like, you listening to this, Dr. Rebecca? Like, If you worry and you're anxious, it's going to happen. What you worry about, what you focus on is going to happen. But also stressors like chemical stressors, um, emotional stressors, physical stressors, Guys, we're doctors of chiropractic. That's one part of our you know, clinic, and the other part is functional wellness coaching and helping people get well through nutrition, functional nutrition, detoxification. But guys, we adjust people. I mean, yeah, people get out of pain, and yes, we see people get off medication, but our job is to just remove an interference yeah. so that your body can connect and it can heal and do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. So your job in regards to your health is to remove the interference, is to support your body's natural process, not bypass it, mm-hmm. not take a med that's going to say, hey, I'm just going to ignore every system in the body. Mm-hmm. Your job is to help your body, mm-hmm. is own natural immune system. So yeah. elderberry is not going to heal you from the coronavirus. An adjustment's not going to heal you from the coronavirus. Yeah. Astragalus, which is used, Food's olive oil, food isn't going to do it. Your body's going to heal it. Mm-hmm. Your body's going to heal itself. Your yeah. All you're meant to do is support the immune system, immune modulator, help that, mm-hmm. help stressors, yep. help your HPA axis, okay? Yep. And so. build up, build up the terrain, right? So utilize, you have to utilize the most important 
factors in health and those are the foundational principles, Absolutely. right? These are the foundational principles, just so you guys know, are the biggest movers and shakers in your health. And I promise you, even though they say, seem simple, that's why they're, they're foundational because you can't have it without it, right? Yeah. If I take a type two diabetic who's been a diabetic for four, you know, 40 years, their blood sugar has been, you know, again, being brought down by artificial stimulation with metformin and insulin. Um, and again, this person has a weakened immune system. I promise you this, they're going to be a lot more susceptible to something like coronavirus. And again, you can give them all the elderberry syrup that you want. You can give them all the best, you know, herbs that are out there. More than likely, that person is going to succumb to those issues because again, the foundation is so far off. The better you build up your terrain, right? You cannot control a microorganism, but what you can control is your body's response, response. to it. Response. Build up the terrain, right? You build up your body in the terrain that your body's in and it will respond appropriately to external and internal environments. And this, and this applies to adults. This especially applies to children. Yeah. A thing, and you guys can go to yesterday's video about fevers, is <clears throat> one thing that we keep seeing is that children are not being exposed to sure. diseases, viruses, bacteria, bubble infections. Children. They're bubble children. And a big thing that's showing up in studies is this issue where an immune system hasn't been put to work. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been um, allowed to fight things mm -hmm. so that when it finally gets in the presence of an infection, it overreacts because it has not been primed. Yep. So this goes for adult and children. And guys, I want to go ahead and say this. We're doing a Facebook Live every night this week at mm -hmm. 9 o'clock. I hope you guys watching this like and follow our page. Mm -hmm. Like this video. Share this video because right now people are really needing some good information out there so let's go ahead and answer some of these questions here okay. uh, CBD chat said I make and take elderberry syrup and totally believe it benefits my immune system sure. that's really really it, awesome it's an immunomodulator immunomodulator, right? immunomodulator. Yes. Um, yes finally <laughs> my dad has been teaching about that for 40 years as a naturopathic oh, chiropractor awesome. yeah. well thank Speaking your dad for friends, us yeah. Because he has kept our profession alive. That's right. stinking awesome. Yeah. Can you take more than one supplement for the immune system? Uh, yeah, you can, I mean, you can, right? To, to, again, support the immune system, right? Remember, you know, just like Dr. Rebecca pointed out, uh, elderberry, you know, echinacea, uh, astragalus, these things are not going to heal, right, the, the virus. They're not going to, they're not going to be a part of it. It's always the immune system. It's like when somebody, you know, beats, you know, survives cancer or beats cancer. It's never the conventional medical treatment that did it. It's not even the, the natural treatment that did it. What did it? It's the body's innate immune system, the innate healing power that's within the body. And so, um, you know, can you take other things for your immune system? Absolutely. Take the building blocks, right? Like the, one of the most powerful things that you see is actually vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is an immunomodulator in itself. And actually, one of the things that I read is that vitamin D3 can actually, if you are if you have adequate amounts of vitamin D3 serum levels, that it actually helps to decrease your risk of a cytokine storm and decrease your risk of something like sepsis. So how many people out there have proper vitamin D levels? I'll put it this way, probably, you know, 70% nope. of our population has a vitamin D deficiency. That was, that's being if generous not, and nice. More. We, yeah. we do vitamin D. And mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when I started doing labs on people like years ago, like vitamin D would be like at a 35, which functionally is really low. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, medical limits are 30 to 100. Functionally, you want to be over 65, 60 right? 90 Lately, it. this last two years, I've done vitamin D3 blood work, 5, 10, 20s mm -hmm. that is so deficient oh, yeah. um yeah. so, so that's really important so, so to answer the question do the building blocks right i love again you can actually in an infection situation a viral infection situation you actually can take higher doses of vitamin a right it's not something that you want to do chronically mm -hmm. um but again in, a, in an acute you know infection state you know there's there's you know definitely recorded cases and, and people have seen amazing benefits by things like up to fifty thousand i use of vitamin A, but again, in an acute setting, not chronically. We don't mm -hmm. want to develop a toxicity to these things. Again, taking higher amounts of vitamin D3 supported by those other fat-soluble vitamins, minerals like zinc and selenium and iodine. These are all amazing and they work well together. As you can see, Guys, my child is listen, still awake. <laughs> we're great doctors. Like We help people get really, really well. 
Um, you, you know, say hi. but sometimes we're, let's be real. We're okay. Say hi, Rosie. Say hi. Yeah. Okay. Let's be real. She didn't go to bed before we could do this. So she will yeah. go to bed after this. Hopefully. Hashtag yeah, real, I, real I, life right I, here. I hope so. I um, that. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. So I want to touch on this. How much vitamin, uh, vitamin, 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 how much, what? how much vitamin D is okay for an adult and child to take? Vitamin D. I will say this. Vitamin D, not vitamin. Vitamin. Um, <laughs> You want to get tested. You want to get your blood work done. Mm -hmm. You want to know where you're at. Um, but uh, as kind of like a basis, you know, it used to be like 2,000, 4,000 um, in studies, and that's really outdated. Mm -hmm. The most recent study is even pushing the upper limit to 8,000. From the vitamin so, D council. From the yes. vitamin D council, 8,000 I use. Yeah. But so we'll have people be on 5,000. <laughs> sorry. Um, we'll have people be we on like the worst 5, <laughs> Oh, Charles, awake. Yes, okay, Rose, you're supposed to go read your book, honey. Okay, Sit sorry down. about that again. So 5,000 I use um, is kind of like the maintenance dose. Mm -hmm. And I'll do labs on people, and I find a majority of people, um, that's not even enough. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So when people are ill, they can take from 10,000 to 15,000 I use. For <laughs> children, kind of the basis is... A thousand um, IUs per the vitamin D council. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure there were yep. the ones that established this about a thousand IUs per 50 pounds. Yeah. Now, um, I wanted to say this because Shannon said earlier, what dose would you recommend for adults for, pre for pre <laughs> prevention? Yeah. Um, one tablespoon uh, per day for adults in regards to elderberry. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's, I think that's totally yeah. fine. I, I think you can do that. I actually think you can do a little bit more than that and be totally fine. Actually, especially in a, in a, in a, at the beginning, right? If you feel some of those mm -hmm. symptoms start, starting on, I mean, to me, you know, elderberry is something that you can do, you know, a tablespoon, even every two to three hours, right? To really help modulate the immune system. I like using things like, again, a stragglers is one of my favorites. So I do want to say this guys, mm -hmm. we do have a store, we mm -hmm. have a supplement store, but within our supplement store it's really cool you can um, sign up for it and we can send you guys protocols and so right now mm -hmm. we have a protocol that we created for our first coronavirus video that we did last week or two weeks ago so if you guys would like that protocol to see what vitamin D we like because you wanted to take it with other fast soluble vitamins um, what supplements we take in regards to vitamin C and in regards to astragalus in regards to minerals you can go I will post a link here just make sure you guys say, yeah, I want that link. I'd like to know, I'd like to set up. Um, and we'll send you that protocol. A lot of the supplements were sold out. They're back in stock right now. So what I'll do is once I get a chance, I'll post that link. Or you can go to Drs. Warren, D-R-S-W-A-R-R-E-N.com. Under shop, there's a Wellivate store. If you sign up on that Wellivate store, just put your email um, in there, uh, our clinic director can send you the protocols. So I know a lot of people ask us about supplements that we use. Mm -hmm. um, have you but heard remember, about? That's oh. the supplement, a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. The supplements mean absolutely nothing if, okay, if you're not doing those, those foundations. Excuse there. me, guys. Uh, let's see here. Um, does elderberry put your body in overdrive? Uh, Tara, no, that's that's what we talked about in this whole video. Um, again, that cytokine storm, I actually broke down the research and just to, to repeat, I showed you the only study that people talk about um, for creating an, an, an overdrive of cytokines and pro-inflammatory cells, uh, again, was done in 12 different donors and so it was done in a controlled setting in a petri dish it was not actually done in the human body to make the jump from that study to saying that it causes a cytokine storm um again i'll just put it this way it is not supported by the scientific literature um again if one day they put that out there uh you know i'm not saying that it can't change but according to what i'm reading right now it is not in the scientific literature that show that um you know what's going to drive somebody into a cytokine storm is is literally an an imbalanced immune system to start with. It's an immunocompromised person to begin with. It's somebody who's not taking care of the foundations of their health, but it's not going to be elderberry syrup, um, yes. you know, by any So means. I will, I want to answer this with uh, best vitamin D brand. So let me go ahead and tell you, because not all the brands are going to be created equal in regards to absorption and what it does in your body. So my biggest pet peeve right now is a lot of people will get like vitamin D or like higher dose vitamin D from their doctor. It's like a prescription. And so this is the problem we're at right now with vitamin D. You know, there was a point 
where you know the alternative alternative health realm and studies were saying hey this vitamin is actually a hormone it's a really big deal that we don't have enough of it and so these supplement companies started making the supplement and these pharmaceutical companies are like oh my gosh we need to get in on this let's make vitamin d and so there's all these people that are taking supplements and that are taking pharmaceuticals of just vitamin d chronic supplementation of vitamin d without any other fat soluble vitamins is dangerous mm -hmm. and especially if you're taking high doses which people will do when they're not feeling well and we do it ourselves but vitamin d isolated is supplemented is not good yeah. you want to be able to take vitamin d not just with k but you want it with um a um e and k so we use um, a few different brands our brands are all practitioner brands like systemic formulas designs for health uh, what's the other vital nutrients? Um, Quicksilver Scientific. Quicksilver Scientific. It's really, really Just so you guys know, Quicksilver Scientific, we love that so one too because it's liposomal. A lot of you guys that are having gut issues that still haven't addressed their gut, mm -hmm. um, using liposomal allows it to be absorbed better. I saw that we actually got a couple of messages from people asking for our viral protocol. Mm -hmm. Guys, just comment on here if you want that. I'll individually send you guys the link or send us a message or go to our website under shop, drswaren, D-R-S-W-A-R-E-N.com um, in that Wellevate store. And I, I had somebody ask me today, a practice member, um, well, if you're gonna talk about this, are you nervous that somebody's going to, you know, listen to this, take elderberry and then have a cytokine storm? <laughs> and and my, my response to that is, uh, you know, absolutely not i'm not nervous about that because again you you know number one you can't prove that just because you took elderberry that's the only factor that created a cytokine kind of storm that's again insane to even think about but then number two my whole process with us doing this video is to actually show you guys that at least according to the scientific literature there is no scientific proof that elderberry creates a cytokine storm and leads to organ failure and sepsis. Y'all, sorry wow. about this. Rosie's yeah. gonna be going, to, we're gonna be wrapping up here soon. Yeah. I know some of you guys gotta have some kids awake, right? That's right, you we got can't to. be the only ones. Yeah, we can't be the only bad parents in the world. Right? <laughs> we're not bad, <laughs> we're just, yeah. Whatever. Right, listen, Anyways, just like you guys, man, we're just trying to survive. Uh, we just try to, you know, put a smile on our face, take care of the foundations of our health, and realize that again, the decisions that we make on a daily basis, they can make a big difference in your health, right, guys? So, you know, again, elderberry syrup can be. Let's kind of conclude with this. Elderberry syrup can be a fantastic thing, right, to use for immunomodulation of the immune system. What does that mean? So basically supporting the function of your innate immune system, right? It can be a very, very powerful tool. I think it's the most powerful in prevention and at the beginning of infection. If again, you find yourself you know, with the coronavirus deep in the infection, I went over some things like licorice root that I think are amazing. Things like N-acetylcysteine. These are things that I've went over in past videos, making sure your vitamin D levels are up. You know, you can actually take higher amounts of vitamin A in an acute situation. Um, astragalus is a powerful herb as well. These are all great tools that you can use, but remember, you have to be eating real food, getting clean air, drinking filtered water with no toxins <laughs> in it, making sure that you're working on your nervous system that what? Controls your immune system and literally regulates that process. You know, doing these foundations, working on a positive mindset, not making decisions out of fear. Stop letting fear drive your decisions. We wanna walk in faith, not fear. And when you put those things together, guys, guess what? You get to be on the whole other side of things. You get to see, you know, again, your body in its amazing health wisdom, you know, absolutely thrive during this time. Uh, and again, be able to watch your innate immune system do what it does best, and that is heal. Absolutely. And so guys, be encouraged. Um, know that, yes, these are, you know, unpredictable times, and it can be very fearful, and it can be um, very scary, but... Mm -hmm. You know, you can't control that. All you can control the same way in regards to viruses, all you can control is your response to it. That's right. And I want to be transparent with you guys. Like this is, you know me, mm -hmm. I'm a worrier. I'm an anxious person yeah. because I have this need to want to control my environment. And so when other people, like when other people are determining what I can or can't control, for years that was something that was really hard for me to struggle with. Mm -hmm. And something that has transformed um, my health and my, my mindset, my spirit, and 
my health. Most importantly, because I don't have a thyroid as cut out when I was 19, mm -hmm. so I respond very sensitively to my environment. Is allow taking this step back and allowing myself to realize that I can't control this out here, but I can control what's happening in my home. I can control what's happening within me, mm -hmm. and I can show my children. Um, what it looks like to deal with difficulties and that's a big thing right now especially yeah. as kids are out of school is that you have this power and the way you teach your kids is not in what you're saying it's in the unsaid mm -hmm. it's the this the the feel of your home and the environment and even though you're stressed out guys I'm not asking you guys to be perfect that's not the point but allowing yourself to feel the fear um, and uh, this is what I tell my kids bravery it's not not being afraid you can still be afraid and you can still be brave and allowing yourself to understand that that in this uncertainty you can still be fearful and uncertain and anxious but then understanding okay now i have to change that mm -hmm. um i can't control that but i have to find the good i have to meditate i have to find um quiet time in god i have to trust who i am and mm -hmm. whose i am yeah. and that i'm taken care of and i say this because we've been in practice long enough to know that the number one thing that determines whether someone's able to heal or not heal, and we can give them the best supplements, the best adjustment, the best food, what determines that is what's up here, what's between yeah, yeah. their ears. So 100%. we want to encourage you guys, and I hope you guys are like, you know, I know we have a lot of new people jumping on here. Like our page, follow our page, um, because we share a lot of really, really great information. We'll be putting this video mm -hmm. once it's done. It'll be on our page, and it will be on our YouTube page. Um, find us on Doctors Warren, D R S W A R E N, Functional Wellness, on YouTube. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for your encouragement. So yeah. many comments where people yeah, are like, "Yeah, we feel you." Kids <laughs> are so loud. <laughs> Thank you guys for that. Thank you for tuning in yeah. and have an amazing and blessed night. Good night. Be well. Mm -hmm.